Hello, uh, welcome to my latest video where I will show you how I've painted a damselfly making heavy use of the airbrush for all the out of focus foliage that was on the reference photo. I hope this proves useful to you. If it does, please consider liking and subscribing and let's not waste any more time and get straight into it. I've just covered the damselfly in frisk film where I'll be using it to make a mask so I can freely paint the background and not worry about getting anything on the damselfly itself. To cut the mask I'm using a scalpel with a brand new blade. Don't try and save the pennies by using an old one even if it's not that old and only been used for a tiny amount of cutting. The risk of tearing the mask rather than cleanly slicing it is too great. Plus with a slightly dull blade you have to press a bit harder and that runs the risk of cutting into the board. I'm finding putting my finger of my left hand on the top edge of the blade helps steady it. You really only get one shot at this so you must be very careful and keep that blade perfectly on the line. I'm now going to peel off the excess mask very carefully, making absolutely sure the bit I want to stay, stays stuck to the board. If a little bit doesn't want to come off, I've got the scalpel ready just to put an extra little nick in there to free it up. Peeling the mask off is strangely satisfying. I'm now finally ready to airbrush the background. I plan to start with the furthest away parts which are brown in this picture. Just establish those first. Then I'll mix up some greens and start with the leaves and stems. Now I'm not going to bother too much about getting the precise colour straight away. The colours end up looking different to what they are when they're liquid anyway. So I'm just going to get close and I can refine it and get closer and closer to the colour I want by layering other transparent colours on top. The paints I'm using, as with all paints, some are more transparent than others but even the very opaque colours can be made to act as though they're transparent by just spraying a very thin layer. I suppose you would call it optical mixing. Now all the um, foliage is out of focus. This being a macro subject so the depth of field is tiny. Even the damselfly has got depth of field from front to back which I'm not going to replicate as I want all the foliage to be out of focus, further away more out of focus but I want the damselfly to be pin sharp all over.
Now I've pre-made some soft masks. I cut these out at the planning stage. A soft mask is anything that isn't stuck down. So it allows the spray to get underneath just a little bit. And how far away you lift the mask from the surface determines just how much will get underneath and how blurry the edge is. Now I'm using it on this main leaf that the damselfly is standing on as this leaf is the one that's closest to being in focus. So I want the edges to be blurry but only by a little. I'm now at the most satisfying stage of the lot and that's peeling off the mask. I've had to be totally sure I finished with the background as it would be quite impossible to put this mask back as the act of um, taking a, a frisk mask off will stretch the plastic a little and often tears it as well. So be absolutely certain you don't need this mask anymore. I'm now leaving the airbrush behind and going to conventional brushes. Painting of the damselfly will be relatively straightforward. I'm using mostly Arteza's metallic paints as I want the damselfly to shimmer a little when you walk past it. I don't think you'll get to see this on the video as it's very hard to pick that up, but it should look quite good in real life. The usual plan is to paint the basic shapes first and then go back and slowly refine everything, putting more and more detail in.
Many thanks for anybody who's managed to get this far, especially without skipping. Although, of course, you're free to skip around the video to speed it up if you wish. If you'd like to see more paintings like this, I've got plenty available. I'll put a link to uh, something suitable at the end. So, uh, thanks for watching, and it'd be greatly appreciated if you could like and subscribe. Plus, consider hitting that notification bell so you'll be notified when I next upload a video. Thank you, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.